Hey folks, welcome back to Authentor. So it's been a long time coming, but uh, this is my first impressions on the F4. Um, now first things first, it's not really first impressions in the true sense anymore because I've flown this thing quite a bit now. Um, and I kind of just had to restart my first impressions because I learned something about the plane like five to six hours in after struggling with it. I really wasn't a fan of this thing's flight performance at all. And then someone told me that it has a dampening mode. Um, somewhat akin to what the helicopters in the sim have to make it so that you can actually fucking fly them because they're abysmally awful without it. Um, so first things first, let's just show you where that is because you'll need it. So very first option under aircraft is in full real controls only and it's in the first block here called toggle SAS mode so I've got it set to K. Um, as you can see, I'm actually practically spaded because of how long it took me to get this video sorted out. Just go over my mods briefly. I initially golded the bullpups, the AIM-9Bs, and I think that maybe the compressor because you have you might have to get to tier ones to get to tier two. I don't know, but I, I didn't want to go into the multiplayer with only the gun, especially not when the accuracy is as bad as it is without this mod uh, or this mod rather um, unlocked but we'll get into that later or in fact you'll see it in the clips because in most of the clips I don't think I had the, the unlock um, so we'll just hop into a test flight because I need to show you this first you want to set your gun targeting distance to 300 meters and you want to have vertical targeting on because otherwise your gun will be shooting way low it makes it quite tricky to get the uh, guns on target. Mode. Um, so dampening mode. Use it for everything apart from defensive flying. It basically slows your inputs in a way, kind of. It's kind of hard to explain, but without it, the F4 has a lot of the bad things about the F100 with it. Like it has a lot of pitch wobble, and at low speed, it pulls up really aggressively and it makes it horrible to fly and I'll demonstrate that once we're off the ground. It's very very easy to tail strike if you don't use damping for takeoff and landing. So if I turn damping off I'm not touching the stick at all this is what the plane does. Below about 450 miles an hour it really aggressively pitches up. Now I probably don't need to tell you why this is bad, but it's horrible to try and counter because you're constantly fighting it and nosing down. You can try and trim it out, but when you pass that speed where it stops happening, your trim just makes you nose down into the ground. Um, and if you're flying at low level to build your speed up, then that causes problems and it's horrible. So if you just use the damping mode, it kind of acts like auto trim and whatever is whatever setting you put the plane on it just sort of holds it there so um, if I point it up here and sort of roll it a little bit it just keeps the angle of the wings and it just sort of keeps you going in that direction um, best use for damping apart from just generally flying around and everything um, it makes aiming a breeze especially on ground targets because it just holds the point perfectly Without it, you wobble up and down constantly, and if you're trying to get accurate shots off with bullpups or dumb rockets, or even the gun, it's a fucking pain in the ass. Um, downsides of damping, pretty much the only downside really, is that it limits your roll rate a lot. Um, I'm trying not to fly too far away from the, the island, but I'll demonstrate it here. Um, so this is the roll rate with damping on pretty damn painfully slow. If you're trying to fly defensively with someone in your six, then they're going to have a pretty easy time following you through those maneuvers. With it off, the roll rate is pretty good. I'd say it's roughly double, if not slightly more than double. But it has a tendency to overroll by about an eighth of a roll. When you let go of the stick, it'll just keep going a little bit. So you have to actually put some opposite roll in to, to cancel it out if you want to stop quickly. Uh, what else? Um, I've gone over most things. The differences between Sim and RB. Um, if you play RB as well, then you're probably aware of the fact that the gun sight in RB points lower than the, the cursor, the heading cursor. 
um, it's kind of the same. It's, um, normally in sim what happens is if you don't use head tracking like me and you zoom in, the gun sight will be in the middle of your screen and as you can see in the, in the F4 it's lower. If you want it to be in the middle you have to look down a little bit like that, which is generally what I do. The only applicable difference that this has to how you fly the plane is that when you come in to land or when you're taking off, um, just be mindful of it when you're flaring because tail striking is really easy as I said before and the gun sight isn't pointing at where the plane is going, the top of it is. So on the horizon right now is actually where I'm pointing. If I do this, you can see that I'm climbing a little bit because of the angle of the plane being nose up. Not a huge difference, but I thought it was worth pointing out. And as I said before, we, we spawned in. If you use vertical targeting and set it to uh, 300 meters, then it points the gun up into the gun sight. If you don't do that, then your shots will go really, really low. So if you're trying to get some clutch shots in, then it's difficult. Although, because it's a Vulcan, even though in the third person model, it's spinning constantly, there's still a spool time, so you don't fire instantly. That's something to keep in mind. For me, um, it's quite a difficult plane to use because you can't turn with anything because you're, you, you bleed off speed far too much and the rearward visibility is awful. You, you basically don't have any. Um, and missile armed aircraft being as they are, if you have anything on your 6 that has missiles, it's, it's, the paranoia goes way up because you can't look and see it. The only way of seeing it is if you're pulling quite hard. Um, and if you're pulling quite hard it means that you're slowing down so that it can catch you. So the only real way of being safe is to stay incredibly fast all of the time or being hyper, hyper aware of your surroundings. Having a wingman will help a lot. I've only been flying this thing solo so far but the clips that we'll jump to in a minute I got 15 kills and didn't die. Um, all against players, I think, but we'll we'll see when I uh, edit the footage down. The only way I was able to do this is by not engaging in a turn fight with anything at all, and just doing hit and run tactics on stuff. That's it's quite a dull aircraft to use. Um, best application in sim is is a strike aircraft. Take it with bombs, take it with rockets, and just hit ground targets. And if you see anything or you're worried about anything coming and killing you, just bug the fuck out of there. The energy retention, um, disappointed by it, to be honest. Um, if you're trying to get away from anything, don't climb. Just get away from it flat and level, because you'll outrun everything, for now. If the game ever gets a vehicle that can fly as fast or faster than the F4 and turn better, Fireworks. I don't know if you can hear those. But yeah, if the game ever adds an aircraft that's faster than the F4 and can turn better, then the F4 is going to be immediately its bitch. Because you won't be able to do anything against it. You just don't have the visibility out of the cockpit to be in a dogfight with anything on your 6. And running away currently is your only defense. Sure, you might get lucky you're doing a scissors with someone like a less experienced pilot, but if you put two pilots with equal experience in two different aircraft, the MiG-19, for example, or the MiG-21, I would rather be in either one of those than the F-4 in a one-on-one, -on -one, a, a million bajillion times over. Maybe even the Hunter F-6. Because if you run away and then turn back onto the target, I don't think you'd be able to get far enough away to be able to have the space to turn around before it's back inside your turning circle. That might change when I'm fully spaded, but right now, hit and run on stuff that doesn't know I'm there and just keeping my speed up is the only way that I feel safe in this thing. Um, and I don't like that feeling. It kind of reminds me of how the Hunter F1 was when the MiG-17 and the CL were like the two most motor aircraft. You were fast, but you couldn't turn for shit. The F4 is the same. Um, what else? The radar on this thing is insane. Um, you can lock targets out to 92.5 kilometers. Um, there's no gun sight, there's no radar gun sight, so it doesn't help you in any way. But the green locking box that you'll have 
probably come to know if you fly on the Java and the MiG-19 or anything like that, especially before the gun sights were removed in this patch. Um, that green locking box, you can lock them up at any distance that you'll ever see the map, basically. I don't think there's a... I don't know how big the maps are in EC, but... I mean, if it's cloudy and the visibility sucks, if you want to track someone, you can track them from 50 plus kilometers away, no problem. Um, and I've been using the radar quite effectively to tell me exactly when to fire missiles and to know exactly when I'm in lock range. Um, it also helps because it tells you the closure rate, so you can see um, how quickly you're approaching something, which can let you adjust your approach to get guns on more easily. Um, last thing I want to say, I'm kind of disappointed by the loadouts. Um, I know that there's only a certain amount of space for loadouts in the spawn screen. Look at that energy bleed. Just from a 180. But, um, yeah, there's only so much space for loadouts, but almost all of them, apart from the raw missile ones, use AIM 9 Bs. Um, and I know this is probably because otherwise no one would ever use the Bs. And on, in Sim, honestly, Bs are fine. But it just seems kind of stupid. I think they need to adopt a DCS style because with how many weapons there are in game and how many different loadout options there needs to be a bit more variety and you need some freedom in setting it up better because right now my biggest gripe with the aircraft is that the way that the loadouts work means that the new bullpups, the C variants that are huge, are just pointless because you can't take missiles with them, you can only carry a cannon and you can't take any additional ordnance, you can literally only carry two of them, like this huge fuck off massive plane can only carry two like 500 pound bomb with rocket motors on them it's just it's ridiculous i'd rather take four missiles the cannon and two of the smaller bullpups because i'll get the same damage done or even 12 bombs four missiles and a cannon it, it, it's just very limiting and stupid um that's that's about it i think um, if I think of anything else to mention then i'll throw it in during the clips that i'm about to talk you through um, and failing that, I will see you at the end of the video for the sign off and a roundup if you like. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, yeah, cheers, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, folks, right. Um, it's not live, unfortunately, because, uh, well, I don't really have an excuse, to be honest. But um, I'm going to show you one full sortie, which I think includes three kills and a bomb run. And then. Um, I'll just run a shitload of uh, kill reel until I've included the other 12 kills that I got in the game. Um, so the idea of running you through this is just like how to treat the aircraft and how to behave in general um, for best results, bearing in mind that it's not spaded yet. But just to begin I wanted to point something out to you regarding the dampening control. So I like to use trim to take off because it removes that element of risk with me getting the um, the pitch wrong on the stick and tail striking. So with the heavy load I'll usually set it to 30 and then I just have to flick the stick to get the nose up and then the dampening thing just sort of holds me on that heading and, and lifts me off the ground. Um, because this was the first flight for this video I wanted to show some outside of the planey kind of footage and I noticed that um, in the third person model when you adjust the trim the, the elevators don't move if you have the dampening mode enabled and I thought that was a little bit weird because the effect still, still seems to work so that could be a visual bug or it could be the, the dampening has this really weird sort of uh, I, I don't really know how to describe it if, if you fly it then you know that it feels different it's almost like you're on rails in a way, and I just don't know if the physics of the game that apply to aircraft generally still apply to the Phantom in the same way when you're using it. I, I don't know how to explain it, but yeah, ignore that whole thought and just yeah, I'm probably chatting box. It's more of a feeling than something I can put into words. But anyway, so despite having 12, I think 500 pounders on, I had no problem at all blasting up to 5k on burner cruising at above 0.8 Mach without burner 
Um, and then because of the altitude and the speed, we can afford to drop the bombs from quite far off. So we are dropping the bombs now. Bombs out, we're going to roll off. Um, and I don't usually do what I would call altitude bombing like this um, from this far away. So I just want to check and see what my aim's like so that I can get better for next time. And they look pretty good, I think. Now we've ditched the way, um, we can either go like into con uh, combat air patrol mode, or we can just go straight back to land and do it again, depending on how you're feeling. Um, I honestly prefer killing fighters and players than bombing. I think bombing's really fucking dull. Like I was saying in the earlier section, I think it's quite a boring plane to use because bombing and ground strike is its most effective application to a game if you want to win. And I'd rather just fight shit. So on the way back, anything that pops up on radar, any pings on the map, I'll head to and I'll check them out. Um, I'll ping the map myself to see if I get friendly callouts because then I know whether to keep going on or not. Unlike the Javelin or the F3D, um, oddly, the Phantom doesn't get identify friend or foe, it doesn't get IFF. So you have to check out every spec that you see unless you have another way of checking it. This ends up being a G91. Um, and again, as I've said before, I don't feel safe in this thing at low speed or engaging anything in a turn fight. So, especially if it can carry missiles. And the G91 has a really good climb rate and acceleration as well. I'm 90% sure it's a YS. So I'm just burning up. Well, I'm actually, now I'm burning up. Um, I'm trying to get as much separation as possible and just get the fuck out of here. I'm not prepared to fuck with the YS. Which, you know, sounds a bit dumb because you expect from how people go on about the Phantom being like crazy OP that it shouldn't be a problem, but honestly anything that can turn better than me and climb relatively well, or accelerate well, and especially if it has missiles, they all scare the shit out of me in this thing because I don't want to have to sit and wait for like nearly half an hour for my respawn to come through if I die. So I play it super conservatively. And it's just not very fun in that regard. Right now I'm letting the team know there's a YS around and then I'm going to blast up to like 9-10k on burner. I've still got half my fuel left, I've still got 4 missiles. And I've still got 1200 rounds of ammo in the Vulcan. Spotted some stuff about 20 kilometers away over here because I can see in the kill food that there's people shooting down our bombers. So we're going to buzz over there and check that out. We get there pretty quick, there's still bombers left, and I can see an LA-200 and a G-91R3 are engaging them. Up at this altitude, in turns you really struggle to maintain speed and lift. Um, as you can see the energy retention in these turns is very, very bad, but I am about 2,500 metres above these people, and I don't think they know I'm here yet. That contrail that you can see shooting off is the G91. I was hoping I'd have much better energy for this engagement, but I, s I feel really, really slow, and you can see all this like wobbliness from the buffing. I fucking suck with this gun, but the missiles weren't having it, so it, I'm gonna have to just give it a go. Um, scatter pattern is abysmal without the accuracy mod. I got a lot of smattering hits on him there, but I have no idea how much damage I did. The damage on the Vulcan is really underwhelming. I think you might need the accuracy mod to land a good, like, solid bead of hits to do any meaningful damage, or get incredibly close if you don't have the accuracy mod. Uh, loop around and chase the G91 down. LA-200 escaped me for now, and the bombers are dead now. Now that we've got the G-91, I'm gonna burn up to altitude and turn around, and hopefully, yeah, the radar helps us pick up the LA-200. And as I was saying before, best application for the radar to me is to tell me when to fire the missiles, or when to spool the missiles up. Missiles lock within 3.5 kilometers. Radar allows you to fire the millisecond that you're within that range, so I start spooling them up early. Second it hits 3.5, we get a lockdown. We lose the missile. And at the speeds that we're travelling, we're well within the no escape range. 
about 10 seconds of hang time and there's the LA200 dead. Without IFF it's always a bit of a risk doing that but no one replied when I pinged them up so you just have to rely on teammates and hope that they're paying attention basically or close in to a point that you might be uncomfortable with so as to be sure. Um, a teammate called for help as I was coming in for landing so I decided to buzz around and I noticed that it was a MiG-21 and that is not something that I want to let get away because it's one of the few things they can hold with me in terms of straight line speed. There it is. I don't know if it's aware that I'm here um, and you'll see once it straightens out that it doesn't react when I'm closing in on it. Unfortunately I've used all my missiles. So I'm going to have to employ my sloppy guns strategy and hope that I get lucky. Radar is useful to just help you locate stuff. Um, if you just tap the lock button, whatever you've got it bound to, then if it's able to, it'll stick this green box on them and it can help you find people that you might not be able to otherwise see. I'm just sort of flailing and holding the trigger down. and. Uh, you, you're not really going to mess without the accuracy mod. So that's sortie one complete. Still got 700 rounds of cannon ammo left, so the staying power of the Phantom is pretty crazy. I've seen a lot of people say that it needs drop tanks. It it really doesn't need drop tanks. You just need to stop using the afterburner literally all the time. If you climb to altitude, it's quite easy to know if you're alone up there and you can cruise at like 80% throttle for probably like two hours if you wanted to and just dive down on stuff that you spot on the radar keeps you out of trouble and if you have a wingman with you it should be fairly easy to uh, watch each other's backs and know if there's something sneaking up on you so for landing I know I use miles an hour which is rare I don't see many people doing that but uh, landing flaps can come down at 390 uh, 390 combat flaps sorry can come down around 390 uh, takeoff flaps and landing flaps are fine at 370 or lower so really high speed which is good because this thing is a boss when it gets to low speed um, gear can come down with landing flaps and you want to be touching down at 250 miles an hour or less depending on the runway length um, the drag shoot is pretty good and you can land pretty heavy because obviously although this is a US Air Force version basically the same plane that the Navy would use I assume that the undercarriage is the same um, it can take a beating and you can see just how nose down we are the amount of travel that's in the suspension on the nose wheel I get congratulated for that landing which is nice and then I fuck up and say well done to him instead of thank you they really need to rejig those uh, those commands but that is the sortie complete um, I'll run some kill reel stuff after this of the remaining kills and um, if any of them require any explanation then I'll add commentary to that as well I know it's been a fucking long video I'll stick some timestamps in the description but uh, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one cheers I was just looking at this clip for cutting it down and it actually dawned on me that there's a tactic I didn't mention. Um, if you're flying solo, or even if you are with a squad mate I guess, um, if you can't shake a six or if you're worried about something chasing you, um, just fly towards teammates. I know it sounds really fucking obvious but I forgot to mention it so I'm mentioning it now. Um, I just saw a MiG-19 buzz past me in the other direction and I'm not about dealing with that bullshit because I fly the MiG-19 quite a bit and uh, Phantoms are just like food for it so I just carried on when it went past me I dipped the nose got the speed up and a friendly call for backup so I'm gonna like fly right at him and either the MiG gave up chasing me because he can't match my speed or he got distracted by someone else when I 
started following the teammates, but I ended up finding him again. Or at least a MiG-19, it might not be the same guy. But um, yeah, makes for quite a nice kill. Although AIM-9Es I found, they're quite shit in a way. I mean they track like, you know, they're god mode tracking. They're like SRAMs almost, but they actually go somewhere. Um, and that looked like a miss to me and it still splashed him. But I have no idea how much damage they do. It looks like they do nothing. A lot of the time they just explode near stuff and it doesn't die. Um, but I must have done something because this guy just tries and books it out of there. But obviously he's not going to outrun a Phantom. I'm not going to risk the guns with the limited amount of practice that I've had and the terrible accuracy so I just fire another one at him. And that doesn't kill him either. Still don't even have a hit message but there's clearly damage because he's smoking. And then I get a lost tail control which I don't miss at the time which is why I keep spraying like fuck but he crashes and I feel safe again. In true IL-28 fashion, despite being already dead, he managed to clip my right wing. And um, since I didn't address it vocally ever, I just added that little annotation at the beginning. Using this stability mode, um, it levels out wing damage. You don't have to deal with it whatsoever. The only thing that you have to worry about is there's quite a bit of yaw drift when you get to low speed. Um, I'm not really sure why, and you can probably counter it, but I, uh, I have your on the twist stick and it's really quite awkward in certain circumstances so I just sort of landed a bit skew with but yeah and here I'm messing with it look and if I turn the stick and then let go of it let it center the stability mode just holds the ailerons in in position and then when I flick the stability mode off they like flatten out so it's kind of going back to that thing at the start of the story that I showed you uh, on the ground there's the stability, I don't know how the stability mode works or if it obeys the physics of the game in general but there's something really odd about how the plane handles with it on So here's something that I wasn't sure what it was at first, but I can see one of the new afterburner effects, and I know that it's not a Phantom. So I'm like, 100% it's a MiG-21, let a missile fly. Doesn't kill him. And just before I fired, a teammate asked for help, and I looked on the map and it wasn't even remotely where that guy was, but it just gave me doubts. So I'm kind of hesitant. I could easily fire again right now, he doesn't seem to be evading, but that niggly little doubt in my back of my mind just keeps... I'm just holding off. Keep checking all these call-outs, I keep hearing people asking for backup and all that sort of thing. And I'm like, definitely, definitely a MiG-21. So no hesitation this time. And yeah. Definitely a MiG-21, and then look at this, um, the Mac Cloud after the missile hit him was awesome, and then one stray, literally one stray round hits him and it just kills him. Pretty sweet kill. Then here I had a friendly bomber, 
calling for backup and I can actually see him being sprayed at all the way from over here and unfortunately he dies before I can ask which one he is like I said no IFF so I wanted to line up on the right target and just murder it in one pass but he dies and now that I'm I know it's a super miss there now terrible attempt with the guns completely completely miss but he doesn't the guy doesn't seem to react so a pretty lazy long turn pretty shallow bank so I don't want to bleed the speed off but then I noticed that he's just really not paying me any mind whatsoever so I tighten the turn off a bit super mister doesn't accelerate well its top speed is nothing close to mine so I don't really feel that much at risk start spooling the missile heaters up early and they're ready for around the time that we get nose on and M90 is tracking is disgusting basically a guaranteed kill if they're flying in a straight line So there we have it, I thought I'd leave the results then since most of it came from one game. Um, overall verdict, I quite like it, I think with more practice getting a good bead with the Vulcan will be incredibly satisfying but then the T2 can probably offer that as well, I really need to grind that. Um, I'll probably do a similar thing to this when I get that as well if people want to see that. Um, I know this has been one of the longest videos ever. Like I said before, I'm going to stick some timestamps in the description. It might take me a while to actually get around to doing it, but they'll be there eventually. And I'll probably double it up as a comment as well, so you can find it more easily. Um, yeah, I'm open to feedback, um, editing suggestions. Bearing in mind, PlayStation Editor is incredibly, incredibly limited. Um, I would like to like stick GIFs in and music and stuff, but the, there's just... I don't have the option. I'm too limited by the software that I've got. But PC build is on the horizon. So once I figured all this stuff out with that, built it and figured out how to edit again, um, all should be good. So I appreciate the support, folks. Um, I don't monetize these videos, so show the love where you can. Uh, share it around a lot, jazz, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.